Hi everyone, welcome to Wisconsin Public Radio. Let me show you around. We've got some historical memorabilia here. We are the oldest station in the nation, contested by only one other station, but we really are the oldest. We've got trophies of various awards we have won for TV and radio. This floor actually houses TV and radio offices. TV's on that side, radio's on that side. We'll just show you radio for now. But this is our AM combo. This is the home to the Wisconsin Public Radio Ideas Network. And this goes out over 31 stations. And um, Chapter of Day also comes from this studio. The story is that it started in 1932 when a guest didn't show up for a show. The host had nothing else to do but pick up a book and start reading. And it's actually now an incredibly popular series, or has been for quite some time. This door actually is part of a sound lock, so when we go in, I'm gonna be talking a little bit quieter. This helps keep the sounds out of the studios when they're prepping segments for air. So, I'll just be a little bit quieter. So this is a producer booth. You can also get a good look at um, the Studio for Ideas Network in there too. But this is where the producer often sits when they're doing Ideas Network programmings. This is, the producer is oftentimes also the call screener. In a perfect world, we'd let every caller that wants to have, that has something to say on the air, but it's just not possible. We have a limited amount of time and a limited amount of things that um, we can get to in that amount of time. So we do have to keep it topic driven. And then this is actually where Jean Faraka sits during her shows. Usually the hosts have to do all the switching, including mixing the announcements in and um, you know, bringing callers, mics up, that sort of thing while they're on the air. But Jean Faraka's Here on Earth is so uh, special effects heavy that she actually sits in this special booth while her technical director does all the switching for her. And then this is a news recording studio. Most of our um, interviews for news are done in the field on digital media now. We don't really use tape recorders. This has just a memory stick that goes in and out of it. Um, and you can see the windows are angled and the special board accordion type material helps for soundproofing. And a special filter on the mic. It makes the sound sound better and also kind of prevents too much spit from getting on the mics. And this is Gil Halstead in our newsroom. Gil is working on Facebook, which is very exciting. And then also a point of interest is that we've got this huge um, collection of phone books. It may seem a bit archaic, but actually, even in this day and age of everything being on the internet, not everything's on the internet. So we're actually ahead of the curve by keeping them all. Um, things like non-emergency police phone numbers or sometimes people are unlisted. Those sorts of things we'll be able to find in the, in the phone book that you can't find anywhere else. So it's coming pretty handy. And we have a very treasured collection of 36 reels from the Kennedy assassination. Um, the Historical Society was going to ditch them and we used to have a, a history-minded person on staff who saved them and so now we've got a huge piece of history here with us. Um, one interesting thing about our news stories is that they are published in newspapers statewide. Um, we have an example of kind of a funny juxtaposition of people publishing a news story that we wrote about meth dealers going after children and then ran a photo of an Easter bunny talking to a little kid <laughs> right next to it. So we don't have control over how they place them in their newspaper, but we've certainly um, been spread far and wide. We, we don't, we're not responsible for the layout. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this is our music library. I'm gonna have to check my notes for the numbers here, but we have over 27,000 compact discs in here and about 10,000 vinyl LPs. Oh, we do have to pay for, um, for the CDs and LPs, although sometimes we do get some donated here and there, but in general we pay for the bulk of them. So when people donate, this is the fruits of that love right there. Now we're heading into Buck Studio. Buck Studio is our large performance studio here. And right now we have our radio pledge going on. So this, this is a really multi-purpose space, but right now it's being used for radio pledge. This originally was also the home of What Do You Know? This is where that took place, but then they had to move off because the audience got too large. Um, Zorba, Pastor on Your Health is also recorded here, and we also use it for staff meetings. Um, once in a while we get to have a party. So this is our FM combo where the News and Classical Network comes out of. And they, I don't know if you saw up there, the on-air light was just lit, so we had to wait for that to go away before we could go in, because they were on the air. All right, so in we go 
2 FM combo, which is home of the WPR News and Classical Network. We also have this space for small performances. I think I've heard that they've fit as many as two cellos and a few stringed instruments. This is where the music sits that will be um, going on air. The hosts actually plan out the music for their shows weeks in advance. And that's one thing that's really great about our station is that the hosts actually do get to plan the music that they play. That's not really the case with commercial networks. They don't have that kind of creative freedom. This is also a studio um, when the team of, to the best of our knowledge, is working on a piece. Usually this is where the talent, or if they're doing an interview in person, will sit. We'll go over to the radio operations control. I'll just show you around here. Um, this is our audio handling facility. Everything, all the signals come in through here before they go out on air. Um, and then also we do route some over to another facility to get sent out. But basically, this is the first stop. This switchboard enables us to connect to various buildings throughout campus. Actually, there are wires that go through the steam tunnels, and really we use it mostly for um, events at the Chazen, and every Sunday um, there's live from the Chazen there. Um, and then also another interesting tidbit is that we have this microwave down here. As tapes get old, the glue that holds the magnetic strip to the plastic actually gets kind of gummy and it doesn't work as well. So they bake it in the microwave for a number of hours and then they're able to play it. So with really old tapes when they do that they want to get it over to CD really quickly because there's only a few times you can bake it before it starts to lose its, lose its information.